Hi. Good day. My name is Professor Emilio Ayasalazar. I'm a college instructor here at University of Cebu College of Criminal Justice, teaching Forensic Science 211, which is basically about the science of fingerprints or that post. Now this morning, I'm going to introduce to you our beautiful modern and spunky Forensic Crime Laboratory, which is referred to as the Fingerprint Laboratory. If you can see this part here, this is the part where many important equipments are being kept. Now, all these apparatus, equipments, and materials are indeed being utilized by students enrolled in this specific course. Now, if you can see this big thing here, this is called the comparator device. This is used to compare prints coming from the subject, who is not known, or a suspect, and coming from the standard file, or prints coming from a known person. Now, over here, we have the different materials that is used for the taking of ink fingerprint on a living person and a dead person. You might be wondering what is the dead person. Of course, there are some persons who are discovered at the crime scene who are not known. Now, in the police parlance, if that uh, kind of scenario is present, it is a standard operating procedure that that person who is not known and already dead must be taken with their fingerprints. Now down here we have the binocular stereo microscope and in the lower part you have the, the uh, fingerprint file stand for the convenience of the students to study the different characteristics of bridges and the parallels. If you can see this one here, this is what is uh, referred to as the fuming chamber. This is used to, to fume objects such as cloth, glasses, whether dry or wet. Anything, object that is suspected to have the presence of latent impression. A latent impression, these are fingerprint impressions that cannot be seen by your naked eye. So we insert them here and then we put chemicals such as nin hydrin and iodine. Then it produces a smoke. That smoke with fumes will uh, make the latent impression will be seen, but that only takes for a few minutes. A good photographer must take photograph of the latent impression, which is now developed through the use of mean hydrogen and iodine, so that it can be scanned and be uh, kept in the APIS or the automated fingerprint identification system data bank. Now, we have here the different equipments, you know, like for instance, this is a rapidized rolling pin. This is used to make even of the ink, fingerprint ink, which are being scattered here, for the purpose of taking ink fingerprints on a living person. Okay? Now the procedure of taking in fingerprints on a dead person is different. Okay? Now this entire thing is called portable table. And this is the uh, glass lab, the card holder, this one here. This is where we insert the fingerprint file card so that when the uh, operator takes a print of the subject, the card will not move thus producing a very clear and precise print of the subject. Over here we have the, the rules and the regulations regarding the use of the laboratory. Okay? 
the safety procedure in handling very delicate chemicals. And also, instructions on the user of the laboratory how to apply remedies when an accident occurs. It is always anticipated that in a laboratory, big laboratory as this, and many students are using them, or even professional people, accidents to happen. So we try very much that those things will not happen here. Now, this one here, these are the working tables. There are four of them actually. Two there and two here. Now, each working table will have two groups to work on a certain activity inside this fingerprint laboratory. Now, we have here the, the different graphic charts of the different patterns like the arch, the loop, and the word, and the different pattern areas which contain the important characteristics of bridges and corals for them to understand the peculiarity, the individuality, the uniqueness of every prince of human being. Now, this laboratory is equipped with two high-definition CCTV cameras. One here and one there. What is the purpose of this? Our department is trying to monitor every movement of every student. We try to discipline our students by following all the laboratory rules and regulations. And another purpose also, that the department can monitor whether the students are all doing their laboratory applications, that none of them will just play around here, making this place as a game room. Now, as an instructor in this uh, specific course, I always see to it that the students obey all the rules, meaning students cannot directly perform their activity without my permission. I always give them the, the nod to move ahead to perform their activity. Now, we have here the vision statement, the mission statement, program, traditional objectives, and program outcomes of this department here at the University of okay. We always maintain this place to be clean and neat. Now every time students perform taking of ink fingerprints on a living subject, both the operator, the operator is actually an expert or maybe a technician trained to take eight fingerprints on a living person. After they perform their applications here, doing the laboratory work, we always require them to wash their hands thoroughly with detergent so that when they touch objects outside here, they will not leave them, uh, you know, the ink, which is very difficult to clean if they are not in, uh, clean out very well. So we have here the different concept at the sink that is uh, abundant with water. Now these overhead compartments that is used to uh, save the work of the students, we call them the activity movements and of course the figure print firefighters. Now we have here our computer system that we use every time we, we will be presenting our discussion in the smart team over there. And you have there the two large speakers enough for the students to hear the sound of a presentation. For instance, a crime scene uh, movie. 